Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Bahman Azad uh, from the US Peace Council. Uh, I will be moderating this important event. I just wanted to thank you first before, before anything else for taking your time to uh, participate in this important webinar. As you all were aware, uh, since last year, the opposition parties uh, in Venezuela uh, had created a, quite a lot of noise about the legitimacy of the Venezuelan government. They did everything they could, um, like organizing or trying uh, protests and strikes and encourage international sanctions and even uh, try to stage a coup and then mercenaries and everything else for the past year. And they have put their whole hope uh, in, the, in the government of the United States to come in and help them to remove the Bolivarian government of Venezuela. Of course, this has failed. And now we are dealing with a new situation um, that the opposition parties are now very well fractured. And those who are following the Guaido efforts to, to sell the Venezuelan government and people to the United States have decided now to participate in the uh, National Assembly elections that is coming up on December 6th. Um, we are very fortunate that, that uh, two of the leaders of the peace movement in Venezuela and, and, and uh, the, uh, the government supporters of government of Venezuela are with us. They accepted our invitation to participate. We have a kind of a full list of speakers. Um, I will get to that uh, as we go forward. Well. Um, on behalf of the organizers of this panel uh, webinar, Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity Among Peoples, Committee for International Solidarity and the Struggle for Peace, um, US Peace Council and Canadian Peace Congress, I would like to uh, welcome you to this webinar. We have a full list, list of speakers. Uh, we're gonna start with our first two speakers from Venezuela. First will be Carlos Ron, president of Simon Bolivar Institute, uh, followed by Gabriel Aguirre, general secretary of uh, Committee for International Solidarity and Peace uh, in Venezuela. Um, we're gonna hear from them about the present situation, about the elections and what is going on in Venezuela right now. And uh, then we will followed by other speakers. Uh, Carlos, please. Eh, muchas gracias, Baman. Eh, buenas noches, amigos y amigas. Eh, well, good evening. I, I probably, I'll, I'll, I'll speak in English since uh, most of the public is, uh, although we have interpretation, most of the public is uh, English speaking. So I, I'll, I'll try. Uh, with that, I want to first thank all of the organizers, and particularly Bama and Margaret for, for helping put this together and all the speakers that are going to be here with us tonight. What we are facing uh, at this moment in Venezuela is uh, an important election. It's one of the, uh, um, it's an election that it has uh, an important uh, geopolitical uh, significance beyond just the simple fact that we have legislative elections like uh, you know, we, we do every five years. Um, particularly, that's, that's the main issue. Um, we have to renew the assembly according to our constitution. A new assembly must be uh, put into in office on January of 2021. Now, uh, for this, and uh, you know, with the, we all know this has been a difficult year because of the pandemic and, and because of uh, other issues. Uh, we are under a brutal blockade uh, by the United States, and as you as you well know, uh, but we are moving forward uh, in adherence to our constitution. And despite the fact that the United States government has tried to block 
effectively the carrying out of this election. So not only, that, I think there's, there's two components of, of this elections are important. Not only do we have to win an election here, a legislative election because of everything that entails uh, 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 revolutionary process, everything that needs to um, uh, be uh, constructed for, for the next generations, but also we need to uh, win this election so that uh, outside uh, of Venezuela, uh, people understand and, and you know that that this uh, attempt by the United States to block our democracy, to block our institutions, is not uh, you know it, it's not acceptable for the Venezuelan people. Um, and you know we have witnessed uh, recently a number of important elections throughout the region. We just came out from a wonderful election in Bolivia that you know basically reversed a coup uh, that took place last year. We have come from uh, a very important election in uh, Chile, which has uh, basically said that the the constitution imposed by Pinochet and by uh, um, you know the, the 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 dictatorship can now be overturned by the people. So now it is the turn of Venezuela to, in, within this election cycle, to show that this is this is an election against blockade. This is an election against the attempts to uh, undermine our democracy. See, we we seen uh, during these. I, I mentioned these these two uh, um, events uh, in the region because what we seen that the the right wing and the neoliberal project in our region has that, that what they have tried to do. Uh, during the last uh, couple of years is that because they can achieve government, they can uh, be elected with an outright uh, neoliberal platform, they have tried other attempts to uh, taking power. And these have been either unconstitutional attempts at a coup or they have been uh, attempts at coups uh, under the, you know, the, the modality of lawfare that we have seen, for example, in, in, in Paraguay, that we saw in, in, uh, in Brazil. And in 2015, when this assembly was elected uh, uh, with an opposition majority, uh, the, the, the National Assembly of Venezuela, uh, they came with the same, sort of with the same idea, that they, were be, they would be able to execute lawfare against the Venezuelan people, against the government of President Maduro. The first thing they said in, the, in the, the inauguration of the assembly is that, you know, we're going to be here to make sure that Maduro lives in, in six months. I mean, they were not elected for this purpose, but, you know, obviously the people, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, the people chose uh, a majority of opposition, but, you know, in order to, you know, play politics and, and, and you know, and have the, uh, uh, and, and be, Part of the political struggle in the country, not to overthrow the government in the way that they were proposing. So we have to understand when we look at these elections that what we're, well, the Venezuelan people are trying to, uh, or are, or will, you know, show in this election is a break from this national assembly that has been, you know, that that has not played by constitutional rules, that has tried to overthrow the government, that has tried to reverse serious policies that were uh, implemented within the benefit of the people. For example, one of the main issues that these, the, the, this, the current assembly uh, at the beginning tried to do was reverse the housing uh, project that Venezuela had put in March. You know, we, we had, right now we have over 3 million homes uh, that have been built uh, in Venezuela for public housing. And the main, in the first laws that, they were, they, that this assembly uh, now tried to implement were laws to privatize those homes, to reverse that project. They, they even implemented laws that were, uh, or they wanted to implement laws that would, that would forgive, that would absolve uh, uh, violent op uh, people in the opposition that attempted, uh, or that were responsible for the killing of, uh, of some people during the violent protests of the opposition. So, it, you have to understand that this assembly came in with a unconstitutional purpose of reversing everything that has been achieved and overthrowing the existing government. Now, 
So that is, that is why we have a tremendous need as Venezuelans to go out and oppose this attempt from the United States to blockade this election, to make sure that people understand that these elections, first of all, are constitutional and are legitimate. This is, this is the text of our constitution clearly states that every five years we must elect a new assembly and it's the turn to elect this new assembly. And we have to dismantle this attempt by the opposition to mock to move forward in, in an anti-national uh, agenda, because it's, it is the same opposition in, in, or the, the same group of opposition, I should say, because we have different types of opposition. Uh, we, have a, we have one opposition that's running, which you know, we refer to sometimes as, as you know, the nationalistic opposition, who has expressed that they are against US sanctions and that they're against uh, you know, a violent takeover of the government. But this opposition led by Juan Guaido not only proposes an invasion, not only attempted a coup in April of, uh, of, um, of last year, but also, you know, what they've been carrying out is, you know, giving power to this idea or feeding this idea that we have a parallel government, that they have, they, they, they can name parallel institutions, like a, a parallel Supreme Court, which they named and, and has no effectiveness. They, and, and we actually rules from, you know, the, 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 the issue uh, rulings from Coral Gables and not from, from Caracas, you know, as, as uh, crazy as that may sound, you know, but they also name uh, uh, different, um, you know, they're naming ambassadors uh, to that without, you know, having the power to do that. They're trying to, and then they, they also named uh, uh, an attorney, uh, you know, that, that was supposed to represent the Republic in many of these uh, the cases that we have outside of Venezuela. And this is an important fact because through those cases, what they were attempting to do basically was to take over of Sitio and other uh, Venezuelan assets, assets of the Venezuelan state. They were illegally, you know, taking those assets from uh, uh, the Venezuelan, the Venezuelan people. You know, the, the case of the of the uh, attorney that represents uh, Guaido or the one he named, he now he has now quit, but the one he named initially, and this is important for, for you to know, was that, you know, he was part of the lawyer team that designed a strategy so that a company in, in Canada called Crystal X could effectively take over uh, our CITGO, which you know is, you know, uh, part of the Venezuelan uh, oil structure that is in uh, the United States. So, he helped advise, he was in the team that advised Crystal X to, to, uh, to issue a lawsuit against Citgo. Then he becomes the lawyer that is supposed to represent Venezuela under the, you know, the fake uh, Guaido government to defend the interest and defend Citgo from um, these trials. I mean, this is, this is it's crazy, you know, the, 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 how, you know, they, they are playing the role of, uh, uh, you know, first they 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 construct how they're going to steal uh, the company, and then they assume a position where they're basically giving it away. After he resigned, now there's a there's another attempt from another company by the U.S. Conoco to to take over uh, uh, Citgo, and now guess where he's working? Now he's going to work for that uh, law advising team. So you know, at the end of the day. We're not talking about a real opposition that wants to engage in politics in Venezuela. We're talking about a group of people that are playing, you know, that are basically, uh, you know, uh, representing foreign interests, the interests of the United States government in dismantling the Venezuelan revolution, and the interests of corporations that want to take over Citgo and any other assets that we have in Venezuela. This is the dismantling of the Venezuelan state. So th this is why it is important that when we go vote on December 6, people outside of Venezuela, keep in mind that this election is to push out this uh, group of opposition people that were representing foreign interests, but also to make sure that we, you know, that, that we as Venezuelans stop this adventure where they're, where they're trying to take over you know, our, our, our handover, I should say, our assets and our uh, uh, company to uh, other interests in other countries. Look, this is an ample, there's been a lot of questioning about these uh, um, um, elections in the press 
because this is some story that is pushed by the State Department, that is pushed by, uh, you know, this uh, opposition groups. But, you know, they're, they're claiming that this is something that is uh, only, uh, where it's only the government that is uh, participating and, 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 and there's no plurality. Well, there's 107 political parties participating, 98 of them of which are opposition parties, in a, in a, with 14,000 candidates nationwide. So this is a, this is a big uh, uh, election. Um, they're competing for 277 seats. And it's important that you know that you know this is this is an election where there's opposition parties that that have a very strong chance of coming out with you know strong uh, uh, strong positions who do not represent Chavismo or who, who who are completely antagonical to the uh, you know the the Bolivarian revolutionary process that has been that have been taking place until now. And, but, but that they are not in agreement with this attempt to dismantle the country's assets and dismantle uh, uh, the country's uh, political system. I think we, what we need to understand, and, and I think what, I'm, what we are asking people to understand outside of Venezuela, is that it is important for, for us to have support for these elections. It is important for us to have recognition outside of these elections, because this is the expression of the, Venez of the will of the Venezuelan people. This is what is actually in the Constitution. This, you know, we, we cannot simply because it's not in the interest of the U.S. or it's not in the U.S. policy. We cannot just say, you know, OK, we're going to stop elections or we're not going to carry out elections because, you know, the U.S. doesn't want to. We have to maintain our sovereignty and we have to maintain our, our um, you know, our, our political system, regardless of what happens, regardless of who wins. We don't know who's going to win. You know, we have to we're being, This is a dispute. We're going out and we are campaigning. And you know, and people have their preferences, and that's fine. But what we need to do is that we, we need to have uh, a, a, an opposition, or we need to recognize the importance of an opposition that has decided to abide by the democratic rules, that has decided to go to elections and to dispute, you know, the the, the seats democratically, not waiting for a coup to take over and put somebody else in government, not for you know an invasion. I mean, during the last Year so we have seen you know attempts uh, uh, you know at, at uh, uh, with military threats on the president and we you you know we we, we had an attempt in, in in 2019 of a drone attack on President Maduro himself we had an invasion in May uh, of mercenaries coming in from from Colombia and which you know in in fact there were U S uh, soldiers there too mercenaries you know trying to uh, Push, push forward, uh, put forward uh, an attempt to uh, create chaos and, and, and maybe incite a coup or some sort of uh, event that would overthrow the government. We have to, we need support from outside as well as you know, mobilization from inside so that we can show the world that Venezuelans are dem democratic people, that Venezuelans want to channel their political differences through constitutional means, through peaceful means, through political means, and not uh, you know, to uh, through any of these uh, uh, adventures at, you know, uh, promoting uh, uh, in unconstitutional ways out. And just to close, uh, again, you know, this uh, I, I want to stress the, you know, the importance um, because, like I said, it's not only the fact that we come out and vote here and we come out and, and uh, express ourselves here, despite the fact that we are being blocked despite the fact that we have a, a you know sanctions and and all these measures that are you know are producing all these uh, pain and, and and affectations on the Venezuelan people we 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 have to make sure that people understand that this is a, a stand against lawfare that this is a stand against uh, imperial imposition that this is really something that uh, the Venezuelan people want to consolidate a peaceful democratic process where you know we don't have any of this foreign intervention. I'll leave it at that for now, and then of course we'll be we'll, you know welcome your questions um, when we get a chance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carlos. <clears throat> um, 
just one more time, the remi reminder that please, if you have any questions, uh, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and type in your questions there. <clears throat> um, the second speaker from Venezuela that we are honored to have is um, Comrade v uh, Gabriel Ag Aguirre, the General Secretary of the Committee in Solidarity International Solidarity and Peace from Venezuela. Comrade Aguirre. Bueno, muy buenas noches a todos nuestros camaradas. Realmente agradecidos por la posibilidad de poder... Then, to all our cameras, we are very grateful to be here in this webinar. And of course, we would like to thank the solidarity from the various organizations uh, in the United States, such as the Canadian Council for Peace, the US Council for Peace, and on other organizations that are participating in uh, the, this uh, webinar. It is really important uh, to highlight uh, several aspects that for us have been very important uh, regarding the history of intervention of the United States uh, in Venezuela. For a long time, we have been denouncing the da dangerous intervention and violation breach to the sovereignty of Venezuela by the United States. Since 1999, when President Chavez uh, was a candidate for the elections, presidential elections, the Secretary of State of uh, Bill Clinton pointed out that the United States were ready to do everything in their power to prevent Chav Hugo Chavez from winning the elections. So ever since that time, we can say that uh, on the onset of our process, the presence of the United States, uh, their intervention has been constant. It has been a blunt intervention. They have been openly antagonizing the Venezuelan process without mentioning other historical aspects of our history, political history. For instance, in the main military facility of Venezuela, there was an office of the Department of State, the State of the Department of the United States so that they could uh, operate the F-16 planes. We needed to ask to the Pentagon in order to fly our planes. There was an CIA office in the Palace of Government here in Venezuela. And uh, during that time, we were under a period of the domination of the bourgeoisie that was in favor of the United States. So ever since 2002, we had a coup d'etat, an attempted coup d'etat, and the United States acknowledged openly that they had participated in that coup. And uh, they were leading all the anti-democratic attempts to overturn the power, political power in Venezuela. In 2004, we conducted a uh, referendum, a revocation referendum, and they did not acknowledge the results back then. In 2016, there was in 2013, there was an election, presidential election, and Condoleezza Rice said that they were not going to acknowledge the results of what they called rigged elections, and they deployed a military operation that was called partnership. In all the shores of the Caribbean, they mobilized U.S. troops in order to attack Venezuela, across Venezuela, and to interfere in the electoral favorable resort for Chavez. The United States also pushed internationally in the military field and diplomatic field and to try to interfere in the 2006 elections. There were also violence organized by the United States, promoted by the United States, violent protests that we called Guarimba. There were mercenaries Many had been trained in Colombian territory. Others had been trained in the US territories. And those protests created 
an internal domestic uh, confrontation atmosphere, that we could face all those attempts with the people, with our people resisting. And uh, in 2014, this uh, aggression against Venezuela intensified by uh, Barack Obama, and they approved the executive order against Venezuela because this was they were saying that Venezuela was an extraordinary and initial threat to the U.S. Uh, interests, to the to their security, and I mean, this was the onset of the coercive unilateral measures against Venezuela, and they legalized this criminal blockade against our country that year. Besides the approval of the executive order, they announced another plan, another plan named the way out that was led by Leopoldo Lopez, which is part of the fascist opposition that today is in Spain. And at that time, those forces called for a violent um, way out from the Venezuelan problem. And uh, they, felt that they could gain political power through violent means. But once again, the people faced them on the streets. In 2015, there were the elections of the National Assembly, in spite of uh, having all the coercive unilateral measures against us. When we started feeling the weight of sanctions, we had also all the protests in, on the streets. And we had a very complex situation with many difficulties in terms of social, political, and economic um, circumstances. And um, in spite, I mean, they, they had a triumph at the National Assembly back then. They won the National Assembly. And the United States had then an opportunity to start an aggression plan, more direct aggression plan against Venezuela, because they had the tool of the National Assembly that was in the hands of the opposition. This is what we called the parliamentary coup. And you see what is happening in Honduras and Paraguay. It was the right moment to create in Venezuela an institutional crisis with the opposition in the National Assembly. And that plan started with those parliamentaries from the opposition, and they proposed solutions in order to overturn the president. That was their plan. There was not a real plan for Venezuela in order to address the Venezuelans' needs. They just wanted to overthrow the government and the first decision they made was to do everything in their power to push Maduro out of power. So, of course, this was a plan of a strategic plan that the opposition has been using. And ever since the election of that National Assembly through all the last years, we have been constantly struggling because uh, the National Assembly was asking more, for more sanctions against Venezuela, for more mainstream media siege for more military intervention. They threat to activate military mechanisms against Venezuela, such as the, tre the, the Treaty of uh, Reciprocal Aid, a treaty against our the constitution of Venezuela, which reaches international law. And of course, it was an action that was to harm our homeland. So everything that they were asking, asking for the military intervention against our country by the US administration, this can be considered as treason, treason of our homeland, treason of the, against the interests of our nation.